Greetings fellow citizens. There is no doubt that this country has tremendous potential, but equally doubtlessly, we have not come close to meeting that potential. In fact, some may say that we have gone the opposite direction. And therefore, hashtag Erevuka Kenya. Please remember that hashtag and I do pray that after this video you are going to make that your personal agenda because you and I have a role to play in resetting the course for this country and focusing on what is important and finally breaking free of what has kept us back and stopped us from making progress. Here is why and how. My name is Dr. Victor Ngani. I know I'm not the only person who is concerned about the direction our country has taken economically. Many of you are in the same boat and you're wondering uh, where we are. And the question has been asked whether or not we can do better or this is the best that we can do as a country. I choose to believe that we can and must do better. This life that we're seeing where things are getting harder and harder every single day, the cost of living is going through the roof. Not every year, but every month and perhaps every week things are becoming unaffordable that we could afford uh, the other, uh, you know, just at the time. Um, this kind of position is not manageable, it's not tenable. There is an opportunity this season. We're in an election period. And so before we get into what I'm asking us to do, I would want us to just take a trip into the future, just be prophetic a little bit, and look at our own lives one year from now. So the year is 2023. Uh, we voted in the election in August and we're about six months in. So let's have a look and see uh, what our lives look like. Tell me, do you see the cost of living has gone down for you? Is it easier to get a job now? Do you feel that you can better afford healthcare? I'm saying these things because the same optimism that we have now around elections, the same joy, the same carnival atmosphere that uh, revolves around elections every year, this is the exact same view we had in the last election, you remember? And the election before that, because every time we have hope that the new president is going to bring about a different change. And so you vote and hope that things will be different. And it's not just president, it's the governor, it's the senator, it's the member of parliament, it's the MCA, it's the representatives. And we, each year we hope that things will be different. But almost every year, with very few exceptions, things just become worse and harder for the people. And so I want us to recognize that and understand that we've done this for 30 years now. Yes, <laughs> we first voted in multi-party elections in, 2000 and, uh, in 1992, a nice 30 years. And we understand that there's something we have done in the last 30 years that has to be done differently. Otherwise, society just won't work. Kenya is a blessed country. We straddle the equator. We have uh, long beaches. We have arable land. We have quite a lot of positive things, some of the best being the human resource, highly educated, prayerful people who are hardworking and are gifted in many, many areas. But then we are also struggling tremendously. I dare say that the main reason for that is because when it comes to elections, you haven't understood that we the people hold all the power and as a result, we've allowed a few people to shepherd us into a place where we keep voting based on tribe and based on region. But you've also had the benefit of 30 years to understand that that doesn't work, that's number one. But also number two, there's no real enmity between these individuals and that they are friends. And you'll see that as they realign and they rebrand, they keep moving from place to place and looking for where the best deal is. And those best deals are not deals for communities, but deals for individuals in those communities. And you'll find it's the same people who have been in authority and in power for the last 30 years. So ask yourself again whether you feel that you have won any of the elections in the past. I'm redefining what it means to win an election. You win an election when after voting your life improves or the life of those around you improves. If your people are better off because of your vote, then you won that election. This is very different from what we have done where we have celebrated when the person you vote for wins. It's okay to have that celebration because there's some hope that comes with it. But the real winning of an election is you win an election when uh, your life improves. So if in the last 30 years your life has not improved, it doesn't matter whom you voted for, you've lost all those elections. Today there are people who are serving as policemen, as teachers and as nurses, and I'm focusing on this particular trio of professionals because they should sit smack in what we call the middle class in this, in this country. And they serve consistently, and they serve faithfully in government for 30 years when they retire, they retire into poverty. 
because the pension system just doesn't work and it's not enough to cater for every need that they have going forward. And that's not acceptable. If you ask in any other Western country, that would not be acceptable. Why is it acceptable in Kenya today? We are having a situation where today Safaricom is trying to raise money. Three, uh, three million people don't have food on their plate because they can't afford to put food on the plate. I lost my job in 2018 and uh, it took almost a year to get on the job. It's not, it's not so easy having been in the trade unions. And I got to understand how painful and how difficult it is for a parent not to be able to provide. And yet today in 2022, people who have not founded unions, they are um, just trying to make ends meet. They're just trying to hustle and get, you know, a better life for their people. They're struggling to put food on the table. Three million people and people are dying of hunger. At Independence, we committed to fight against three ills. The first was Umaskini. The second was Gonjo. And the third was Jinga. I want to say that the number one thing we're going to do is to revoke and as a result, we are launching this revolution in Kenya today called uh, Erevuka Kenya. And Erevuka Kenya is not a physical revolution in the street or anything of that nature. It's a mental revolution in our minds that we're going to change and move away from tribal voting. And we're going to come and make a decision based on who can best deliver us. And to support and say that an unemployed teacher in Nyanza and an unemployed teacher in, in uh, Eldoret, in Rift Valley, that these two people are closer together than they are to their leaders. Because if you can address unemployment for teachers, you address unemployment for teachers across this country as opposed to a particular region. If you can address the same for unemployed doctors and unemployed nurses, if you can address the issue of farmers, you address the same issue of farmers for those in the Mount Kenya region and the farmers in uh, the trans region and in any other part of this country, then you address the issue of farming and food security uh, uh, collectively. If you address the matter of healthcare, that is healthcare for a nation. And therefore, I'm asking us to change how we look at things and begin to make decisions at the ballot that will give us a hope. As a, as a nation. Now, I remember uh, reading about the Israelites and every time they got a good leader who honored God and followed in the ways of David, the people prospered. And every time they got a criminal leader who did not re pay any regard to the ways of David and did honor God, the people suffered. It's that simple. We can do the exact same thing here in Kenya today. The other story is of the Good Samaritan. And he is a member of a particular tribe who has fallen by the wayside. And we have rich Pharisees and Sadducees who are influential people in society, big people in society from the same tribe, same region. They passed the person by. Who came to help? Someone from a different tribe, the Samaritan. And he did not help because he was a Samaritan. He helped because he had compassion. And therefore, can we make compassion the yardstick for the people we are choosing in elections going forward as opposed to tribe and as opposed to region? Anybody who comes to you and tells you, Sisi wa enohili, ama Sisi wa kabilahi, please understand that is your enemy who has decided that we as a people are not bright enough to understand to do different. I've been asked who am I to think that I can do what I'm doing right now. And I pose that question to you. Who are we as a Kenyan people? Are we that helpless? And I'm telling you, that united we are not. I remember when we founded the doctors' union, uh, we did not care about tribe. We did not care about region or ethnicity. We cared only about the things that were affecting us, com the common things that were affecting us. And when we paid singular attention to those things, we built one of the most consequential unions in, uh, in Kenya. And as a result, the lives of doctors improved. We can do the exact same thing for the Monainchi. So this is my prayer for every single Kenyan that we can listen to this. It's, a, it's an audacious thing. It's an audacious thing. But hashtag Revoka Kenya, this is what we go by. I want to challenge every person who is younger than 35 years old not to walk in the path that has been walked before by those who have followed tribe and have followed region. That is not the path of prosperity. That is a path to more of the same. I want to challenge anybody who is between 35 and 55 that when you go into retirement, please give yourself a chance for a retirement that works for you, as opposed to having to keep working so that the time you stop working, you're in poverty. Please give yourself a chance to own a home because those things are possible. 
if the society works, if we put our community together and those things will not work because of tribe, because of region, they'll work because as a people you've understood what works. And I'm calling upon each and every Kenyan, no matter your sphere of influence, to step up and make a revoca the thing that we do. Let us join hands to fight the biggest enemy we've had, which is Ujinga. We decided to pick that from inception. And let it be known that anybody who tries to put us back in the wide road, the lazy road of tribalism and of a negative ethnicity and of putting us in cocoons of, of regions, that that is a true enemy of the people. And here's the thing, they have concluded that we will never liberate ourselves, that this trap in which we've been put is too strong mentally for us to move out of it. We are strong elephants tied to a chair by a rope, but because that rope has conditioned us to believe that when it's there, we cannot move, we do not move. We are saying that we have woken up and we've understood that we can and we will move and break free from that kind of slavery. This is my prayer for each and every one of us, that from this election going forward, this tiny East African country is going to become a world leader that will be cited for generations to come. Let's make history together. The first mental and democratic revolution across the world that has had a tremendous impact on the people. Let's change our destiny, guys. Let's get up and do it. Hashtag Erevuka Kenya. Remember that hashtag, make it your personal agenda. Let this country move forward. May God bless you.